Hey guys, in this video I'll show you a quick breakdown of my setup that I've used for my shrink plastic wrap animation I've done a couple of months ago. Please note that this is not an actual step-by-step -step tutorial and I might go through some settings quite quick. Any questions you might have later, please don't hesitate to drop it in the comments and I'll answer to all of them. Let's see the final animation before we jump into Cinema 4D. We are now in Cinema 4D where we have the main object and this cube that I created and which will be used for the plastic bag. I'm gonna hide it for now and I'm just gonna pop out the XP system. I have an XP emitter and the emitter shape is set to object. In the object tab I just dragged our cube, emit from points and one particle per source element checkbox on. The next thing is the emission tab, where the emission mode is set to shot, shot time, first frame, speed zero, and radius four. Radius is a very important thing and I'm just gonna come back to it in a second and explain it why. If I press play now, as you can see, a particle is emitted by the individual point of our cube object. The radius of the particle needs to be as big as possible, but try to avoid to interact with each other. Because later we're going to use some dynamics and if the particles are interacting, they will try to avoid each other and there will be some unpleasant results. So keep this in mind. I'm gonna hide the object now. And as mentioned, I'm gonna use some dynamics. I have an XP constraint, which will be turned on, connected birth checkbox on, and an XP collision as well, with the values of 1% for bounce and friction 100. If I press play now, nothing is happening, but we have these dynamics on now. To have the particles attracted towards our head object, I've used an attractor, which I'm gonna unhide it and turn it on. I've placed it somewhere in the middle of our main object. I've used a fall off with the shape of box. And also I have some keyframes in here. Also a very important thing is the type of the attractor which has been changed from velocity to force. If you follow these values, you'll see that, I'm just gonna press play now, you'll see that at some point the force goes higher and then it goes back to zero with acceleration and speed limit as well. So basically we'll just have to play with the values, achieve the result you want and then stop the particles by being affected by XP attractor. I'm just gonna hide it but leave it active. To have the particles interact with our head object I've used an XP Collider tag with same values 1% for bounce and friction 100. So now the next thing that we want to do is basically to have our cube act like the particles and to do this I've added an XP deformer as a child of it just gonna turn it on and in the object tab the emitter option I've just dragged our XP emitter as the main source if I press play now you will see that every single point of our cube is following the particle that has been generated by that point just gonna hide the XP system and as you can see now Everything works quite well. As you can see here, the surface is going through our head object. And to avoid this, you have to go to the project settings, X particles tab, and this iteration slider needs to be increased. 
I know that the value of 18 work for this purpose, but you might have to play with different numbers and see which one works best for you. Um, it's good to keep in mind that once this number is increased, the viewport as well will be slower and try to avoid increasing that number too much. Once you're happy with the simulation, you can just cache the build to have a smoother and a faster viewport. The next thing we want to do now is to have the mesh of our cube to look like a proper plastic bag. And to do this, I have this setup and in here I have a subdivision surface which just gonna drag our cube and as you noticed in my render I have this nice organic bouncy effect. To do this I have this delay effector and I've just set the deformation to polygon and just played with the strength so as you can see here the next thing I added a cloth surface to add some thickness and another subdivision surface on top of everything I really hope this is useful guys. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, if there's any questions you have, drop them in the comments and I will be happy to answer. I kind of like to do this kind of quick tips, so I'll definitely come back with some new stuff soon. See you next time.